Der Spreepark is a troubled place. Its story began during the era of the DDR. In the year 1969, a vacant site amidst the Berlin Plenterwald was developed to house the first and only permanent fair site of the DDR. To its guests, it offered fun fair rides, music and dance events. As the German reunification happened, the so-called VEB Kulturpark Berlin needed a new management. It might have been a coincidence that seven bidders tried to get a hold of the property. But in this world of dreams, fate and fairy tales, are there truly any coincidences? So Mrs. Pia Witte won the bid. Shortly afterwards, she and her husband Norbert invested 40 million Deutsche Mark into the new Spreepark Plenterwald. The gates were opened in the year 1992. After the arrival of new rights, the true struggle began. The Senate of Berlin declared new environmental restrictions on the woodland and the premise of the fairground. Overnight, 8.5 hectare land were lost to the park, involving many of the park's vital parking lots. Money became a problem. As visitor numbers declined, so did the financial health of the Spreepark. 2001, it was shut down for good. Family Witte got into a legal fight with the Senate and Norbert Witte took drastic measures. He and his son took an impressive number of rides and attractions and left Germany for Peru. Hexed with bad luck they tried to hide but ran into new difficulties because they smuggled 362 pounds of cocaine within the rides. The son ended up with a sentence of 20 years in a Peruan prison. The father himself was sentenced to seven years of imprisonment back in Germany. After that, he was reinstated as the manager of the bankrupt Spreepark. The Spreepark became lost and forgotten after that. Nature reclaimed the place and seems unwilling to give it back. Only a fool could imagine some other lost might have found their way and new homes in the ruins. In the year 2014, a fire broke out and destroyed a part of the old British scenery. Luckily, nobody was found hurt. But sometimes it is hard to find that what's lost. The history of the Spreepark is not at its end. Although more than one investor or project tried to buy the compound or made planes to revitalize it, all of them failed for one or another reason. In 2016 the state of Berlin itself bought the fairground and since then is aiming for opening the gates for the public once again. What, or better who, will the tourists find then? Will the Spreepark still be a home? This is Red Moon Roll playing, and we are playing Changeling the Lost Homebrew Edition. As you finally step through the gate, the first thing you notice is the heavy taste of iron on your tongues. The air is filled with it and settles on your skin. You will never feel it this intense as you are right now. But there's more. Old oil, rust. Rotten leaves mingle as smells to the iron. 
Your bare feet step on brown foliage, which is completely soaked by the rain. There are ragged trees around you and a paved road in front of you. The rain is still drenching you. Your hair is plastered to your skin. Without any noise, the gate behind you closes and disappears. You too are alone. <laughs> I fall to my knees. Whilst there is, of course, still an element to me that is not quite substantial, my physical form has returned from my ability usage, and, and there is so much more as well. There's a feeling of the ground and the rain, and I'd forgotten. They feel so, so present. I kind of feel very sick, and then I feel really hungry. I feel really thirsty, and I kind of just collapse, and I just sort of almost mouthing to Hannah. <laughs> we, we, we're here. We've done it, haven't we? I think. Oh, God. I just stand there, frozen, like almost mid-step, taking in the sight, the noise, the... The, the smells and I turn to you with a bewildered look it's like is is this home? I, it is I, I kind of start to stand I look down at the clothing I was wearing it's still there but we are no longer in its home and the materials are greying they are browning, they are deteriorating, not entirely, but where once I was wearing such vivid bright colours, now I am in rags, brown and grey. Uh, yes, we are. And then suddenly, in the confusion, it hits me. She's my sister, isn't she? She's my little sister Hannah. How could I have forgotten? Gotten, and I just sort of look at you and go, we, we are home, sister. We're home. Sister? Sister? Yes, don't you remember? Yes. Yes, and... No. I... I... It's... It's... <sighs> it's so hard! <sighs> And I stand there, it's lost. So many memories returning, but with gaps. And, and, and also, it's almost as if I have every memory that returns here, a few memories of where we were are being replaced. It's like I can't keep it all in. David. Yes, David. <laughs> yes, that's my name. David Schmidt. Schmidt? You're my sister. We live in Germany. We... we... Where, where have we been? What happened? Ah. Oh. I... I look at you, and then I look down on myself and realize that the fur that used to cover my body is gone and I'm practically naked. In the rain, I look confused. I, I look around. Uh, I, it's, it's cold. It's why? Why am I freezing? You. That's how things are in reality. Oh my God! We were. We've not been in reality. That's fucking crazy. I shit. Fuck, it's, it's strange. A new way of speaking is coming back to me, as if this is how I used to speak. I didn't always speak in such ridiculous... Some of those words I had to say, they meant nothing. They mean nothing to me now. Reality is different, isn't it? I kind of reach over and see you shivering. I can still see some elements of that 
Lucifer and who you were, but it's funny because there seems to be something else over you as well that does make you look more like just a woman. And me a man, I suppose. Uh, hmm. We... we need to... to... to find... uh... somewhere. Yeah, 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 now. This, this, this... I don't think we're safe yet. We... No. they will... the hunt... what... what... Who? We need to go home. I remember where home is, don't I? I think I try and remember where home was. It's a complicated situation, isn't it? You two, looking like humans. But if you squint a little, if you concentrate, you can see the shadow. You can see the beast beneath the mask. Will this be forever like this? Knowing you do have two faces. Who else might be able to see them? What will the people at home think and say? Yes, home. There is a way. You're right. A memory crawls back to your mind. To the left. The road will lead to Berlin. To the section Trepko. There's your, your home. Your flats. The place where your father and your mother live. To the right. There's this other place. A closed amusement park called the Spreepark. You remember it being closed some time ago, but there is a ferris wheel in it. Part of me really wants to go to that left, but there's a hesitation, a fear. What will I find there? I don't know. Maybe, no, I, I, I think about the other direction and I look to Hannah and I sort of reach into my pocket and pull out that ticket. Wait, I, I was given this. It might mean something. Uh, maybe we should go what? this way. Wait, wait, wait. I, I open my clenched hand and in it you see a, a similar ticket next to a crystal and I pick up the ticket and I hold it up towards you see I I, I have one too were we there was that how we got where we were let's, let's go there let's let's do that I I kind of take off an overcoat I was wearing leaving me at least with the ragged remains of a shirt and I hand it to you Hannah so you have at least some cover Thank you. Thank you. I... I... I start crying. Because I haven't... I'm not sure. But I think I haven't really met... Kindness in quite a while. I just... Pull the coat closer over myself as I start walking down the path. And I sort of hesitate for a moment, seeing your pain, and I feel sad, because you were family. <laughs> we are family. There wasn't there some more family. Oh, what has happened to us? Uh, I follow. I follow in the rain. The blood dripping from my leg washes away in the rain, leaving muddled footsteps behind me. And so, you take the road to the right, deeper into the woods, hurting, crying, lost. At 
the end of this road, there is a really, really small parking area. But time has conquered it. It's overgrown by grass. Then there is a fence. It is weathered, but not that old. It's warding everybody off from the side. You follow the fence for some time and you reach a gate. At this gate, there are some brightly colored pay booth, but the colors, they are fainting and there's nobody here. The gates are open as if somebody had forgotten to close them long time ago. You are at the entrance to the amusement park. You remember its name. It's called the Spree Park. Somewhere behind these trees over there, there must be the river, the Spree, which is flowing down to the sea right through Berlin. The city hiding from you. Free, free indeed. I sort of start paying attention. Is there anywhere we could hide or a shelter of some kind, at least get out of this rain? Yeah. There were some, some booth further down the line where you can buy food and, and drinks. There were benches and tables to sit down, yes. Your father took you here a long time ago, before you went away, before you were snatched, and even before the park was closed. It has to be the year 2002. We... we have been here, right? Yes? Father took us here, I think. Father... yeah. Why? Why here? It's a... It's a fairground. You... <laughs> Fairgrounds are places people go to have fun. Yeah, but why? Why now? Oh, I, I kind of, again, start moving forward. I want to find somewhere out of this rain where we can think. I'm soaking wet. It's weird, though, for a few moments, feeling soaking wet actually doesn't feel so bad. It's a sensation, at least. What was the last time I had true sensation? I can't remember. Hmm. It feels wrong, but right. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Can you see anywhere we can go? Uh, maybe we could get into like a shed or a or a, 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 a building. I'm looking around at the old fairground and the writhe covered, I imagine, in rust and, and grass. Yes. This is a lost place. Maybe even a forgotten place. There are some boats looking like swans drifting in a man-made bazaar. But plants are growing out of the seating areas of these little boats. There's a roller coaster complete with all the beams and the carts and everything, but it's standing still. Rust covered, trees growing through the rails. I point towards the brightly colored opening of the roller coaster, the big blue multicolored head that looks like a tiger's face or a, 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 a feline face at least. And I say, maybe we can find there. I I nod. I move to follow Hannah. I pause for a moment at a puddle and see my reflection. Obviously I can still see, as you said, if you concentrate, that I don't have any features really. But then there's this 
over image of a man, I look mid thirties perhaps, long dark hair, dark eyes. I just sort of look at my reflection for a moment, like touching my face. David? Hmm? Get out the rain? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sister. <laughs> yes, of course. Come on, yeah. You. I remember you now. Yes. You do? Oh, good. Anything good? <laughs> your, your hair was shorter. I smile. I laugh. Why did I last laugh? Honestly, I laughed falsely many times. But this is a true humor. Uh, do, do, do you think it looks better long or short? I like it. Like it is now, yes. <laughs> and again, uh, taking your lead, I move to this place we're going. Just try. I, I crawl under some of the rails that go into this kind of, you know, dark tunnel over the roller coaster just to get out of the rain and maybe get our bearings a bit more. I kind of go to the side and enter the dark tunnel and stop just inside um, kind of holding out a hand for you to help you climb under at least it is dry in sight though dark the lights that led you through the gate have disappeared you seem to be alone the cold wind doesn't get to you here, but there's no fire, no food, nothing to drink. I find a place to lean against the wall and sit, and take in our surroundings. As I do so, I say, well, that's one problem sorted, but, oh, look, we need to eat and drink. That's things you do, remember? Uh, I nod uh, enthusiastically, and then uh, I, 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 I can see what I can find. Oh, if you're sure, maybe wait for the rain to ease off a little. Yeah. I'm so tired. I start sniffing around inside this tunnel we're in, but uh, realize after a bit that my smell isn't as keen as it used to be, but I try to scrounge up some nice beetles or something in the debris and the leaves on the ground here. There are a few. Uh, your nose must be working better than that of an average human, but the disappointment is there. What do you present to David? I contently put one mid-sized beetle in my mouth and start chewing quite enthusiastically uh, on it. Not really bothered that it's a beetle I'm, I'm chewing on. But I actually present to you uh, one big kind of a black with a, a blue greenish oily look and a, a big larva as well. And I smile. Hi. Look at it. For some reason feeling an initial bit of disgust, although I'm not sure why. It is food. And then I will take it and eat it. I look very proud. Of myself, I, I I know it's not much, but but it's sustenance. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's good. Yeah, it's it's good. Something. I feel a little better, at least. I hope so. It tastes horribly, but it's it does work against the cramps in your stomach. You settle down, taking deep breaths calming your heart's rate as a loud booming sound gets you back on your feet it comes from the entrance I frown and I try and see if I can just see outside this enclosure like crawl again and just peek out what, what's going on 
There is somebody standing over there. He is towering, and in friendly terms overweight. Although it is cold, he shows an unappropriated amount of skin. Two rows of small horns crown his head, and his nose has some oriental qualities to it. The eyes are small and deep in their holes. They are moving slowly to inspect every single one of you. He doesn't seem to be in a hurry, and a broad smile forms on his lips. Pointed ears give a more Akkadian influence to his appearance, and his chin is covered by a braided purple beard. Sluggishly, he raises a hand which could easily crush David's head. Excuse me, police. I just wanted to know, do I have to crush you? I look to Hannah. I look at this figure. It seems he is very aware of where we are, yes? Yes. Hmm. I draw a breath and I say, No, uh, friend, uh, no need to crush anyone. What can we do for you? You can tell me. Are you intruding? I have to crush intruders. No, 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 no intrusion. This, this is our place. Now, this, we live, yes? You do live here? Can't remember your faces. Seems like intrusion to me. I actually steal myself and attempt a hostile takeover to claim this this piece of land for me and my brother. So I kind of step in front of my brother. So weird calling someone a brother, but I think I could get used to that. Uh, I step in front of my brother and kind of straighten up a bit and I say, Well, there was no sign here and uh, we needed a place to stay, so... Well, no one lives here but us. We live here now. And I kind of snarl a bit, showing my not as pointy teeth. As you do this and are standing your ground telling this place it belongs to you, you're hit by a strange resonance. You aren't the only person who is using fey magic at this place. You're feeling a strong present. It does remind you a little bit of the hatch, but it's, it's not of the same luring and dangerous qualities. It's more like you're fighting against the combined will of others like you. It is as if you were working against a community vowed to each other to protect themselves. Your persistence and attitude, it seems like it, it moved something in this ogre-like creature. He lowers his brows and comes down with his head at the same level as your face, with his little dark eyes texting you. You... You little creature protecting this man. Impressive. You are a true fighter, aren't you? I just peer at him and, and nod vehemently. And kind of peering a little behind you, I say, She is, but uh, that doesn't mean we have to do any fighting at all. Why don't we talk instead? and get to the bottom of everything. Hannah's 
magics opened an opportunity for you, David. Try to ease him down with manipulation and persuasion. Hmm. I shall, and as I do so, I am, of course, very good at fast talking, which means that if he resists my role, my social role, it's a minus one to his resolve or composure, whichever one he's rolling. So, let us roll my manipulation and persuasion. Yes, I start saying, after all, clearly, you, sir, are important, and we respect that. So, how about we settle down and discuss if this is, for example, a place of intrusion, who would we be intruding on? Let's talk about that. And two successes. He frowns, but seems to listen to you. Maybe... Maybe crushing you isn't the first priority. To speak with you properly, you should invite me to this place. I give Hannah a look, sort of nodding. I think we should invite him over. It's only polite. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I beckon him over with my hand. Come, come sit. Uh, share. Food. Food, you say? <clears throat> and he enters. Um, um. I, I start uh, running around like crazy, trying to find more bugs and, and larvae. This seems to strike another chord in him. Fighter, serving food. This is gonna be great. He doesn't seem inclined to crush anybody's head anymore. No, on the contrary, now he's listening. Mm. So, uh, my name is David Schmidt, and this is my sister. Uh, please give us your name, uh, friend. You can call me Bob, but you shouldn't give others your true names. It's dangerous. I blink a little and recall that knowledge, but I suppose I, I kind of laugh a little. You, you're right, forgive me, I I didn't remember that that was my name until just now. Sorry, you're right. So come up with something else. It's getting a little into your heads, isn't it? Returning. Y yes. How do you know we've, re we've returned? You're like us? Did the same some years ago. Ended up here. It's a good place to stay, I would say. Mostly kind people. Difficult sometimes. And the hunts are unnerving to say. Oh yes. The hunts. And suddenly, out of thin air, he looks really depressed, sad, hurt. He isn't the master of his own emotions. It's all plain in his face. I nod. I sit. So you are like us. You've also been to the other place and you escaped. There are, there are other people here who've done that. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes, we are a small community. Living together. Sharing this place. I'm the guardian. Not a very good one to be said. I return. Um, actually, um, I found plenty now. I wandering further into the tunnel I, I, I've got some mushrooms and uh, and more beetles and and I think uh, an edible root or two uh, that I that I offer to the guardian yeah food heat yes oh these are delicious 
then he grabs one of the big beetles. Well, thank you, Bob. If possible, maybe you can... We'd like to meet the, the others, then. We, we don't wish to harm anyone. We would be grateful if, if... Well, we have apparently claimed this area. But we want to do that the right way. Uh, of course, the right way. We wish to... We would very much be appreciative of your assistance. Uh, we don't really know what's going on at the moment, and uh, as, as memories are coming back, I, yeah, we'd be grateful for what you can offer, and willing to, to, to offer in return, of course, anything we could. You offered plenty. And she looks upon Hannah as if she already was one of them. I reach out with a mushroom in my hand to my brother. Eat. Good. Good. Uh, I, I, and I start eating. This is much better than the beetle. We, we, uh, we, we want to go home. Oh yes, all of us want to. Good luck with that one. But, but maybe, maybe I should introduce you to the others, don't I? We'd be grateful. Thank you, friend. And I look to Hannah and say, yes, that's what I want as well, but it might, maybe, <laughs> if they can give us some clothes, some food, and then during at least the night, and then in the day, we can, you know, properly go home, maybe. You, 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 you think, you think they'll, they'll come? You think they will hunt us? They do every time we leave. It's like a curse. We can't stay away for long. They come, hunt us down. And it seems as he wanted to say more, but he fell silent. I bare my teeth and I say, I, I know plenty of, of the hunt. Plenty. Then you might know about the losses too. Let's go. Let's, let's go. I will take you through the rain to someplace cozy. Hmm. That sounds good. Uh, come, sister, let's go and say hello. I, 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 I put the last piece of of, uh, of a big larva in my mouth and, and munch away. It's like a nodding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go. And you three leave the roller coaster hideout. It's still raining, but not so much anymore. It lighten up a little bit. You take some forgotten trots through the park and you reach the central area for food, drinks and uh, merchandise. There are some booths and huts and Bob leads you to one which is actually lit. There's light coming through the plastic which covers the open areas where the, the exchange of money for food would happen. Of course now in the midst of the night in a closed amusement park there's no such thing as trade. Arriving at the door he knocks on it and growls. It's me, Bob. Please let us in. And a voice from the inside answers. Oh, Bob. Yeah, of course, you may enter. And the door opens. Once this place was a store for purchasing sweets. Now there are cushions everywhere around the popcorn machine, which itself became a fireplace in the middle of the room. Over an open fire a kettle sings its jarring song. Used clothes are piling up in the corner, and you can see stockings hanging from the cookie shelves. Foolards on the walls are somehow keeping the cold outside. The floor is sprinkled with vibrant paint spots. The smell of candied apples and roasted almonds lingers faintly in the air. 
You can't see any piece of furniture or item that isn't damaged in some way. And in between this lovely mess, there's somebody sitting. You might have seen sculptures of people who seem as if they might move in a second. It takes the highest craftsmanship to awake these things to life. The woman in front of you is made of pure marble and the dream of every artist. The sculpture awoke. She moves with an elegance which can only be inspired by poor genius. For a second you might mistake her for a fairy, but there are deep cracks in her porcelain skin. The perfection is broken and shattered. One of the cracks runs down from her temple to her chin. She is dressed sloppily in a pair of white trousers and a torn pullover. A pair of high boots and multiple knitted bags complete her attire. As we step in, I take in the sounds and smells. Oh, this place is warmer, better, and is that the smell of some actual food somewhere? I would love that. But I remember myself, and even though I know it's still strange, I do feel that among people like us, it's better to show respect in the way I've been taught. And I do one of my bows no longer perfectly fluid, because reality makes it seem as if bending in some ways isn't a good idea, but there is still an element of my former grace as I say, thank you for having us into your home, your abode. Forgive us, we are new here and we are simply seeking some shelter and maybe some help. As soon as you make your bow, she is on her feet. You hear a, a shattering gnarl crack coming from her as the different parts of her body grind against each other. Then she is directly next to you and pulling you up from your bow, waiting for you to end your speech, but then saying, Oh no, please don't. We don't have any useful behavior like this here. I, of course, forgive me. I smile. I've taken two steps forward to defend my brother. And, uh, I can tell that she's not hostile. Uh, so I kind of slouch over a bit and, and just you know, growl softly under my breath. So, you feel her fingers lingering on your shoulder, wandering up to your face. David, what does this feel like? It feels good, the touch of someone else. Although, I admit, as the fingers reach my face, it does feel strange because it feels suddenly as if like her fingers are going a little further than they should as if is there anything solid there am i solid still yes i must be but also i'm not it does feel strange but the something about it does at least feel pleasant to me gosh you're beautiful. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I suppose. Yes. Bob, look at him. Look how beautiful he is. Uh, isn't this a little bit, I don't know, inappropriate? I forget about it. Then she turns her attention to you, Hannah. And who might you? You're stunning. What? I am. I'm Hannah. Yeah. Hannah. And I'm. Uh, he, he's my brother. You see her hand reaching for your face. I. I actually. I. I. 
quickly draw back as she tries to reach for me because I'm I'm not really comfortable with people touching me like that. I cower behind um, Bob. She does look a little bit disappointed. <sighs> no, no, no touching. Please. Of course, of course. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Wh- why don't you enter properly, and and I will make you some tea. The the water is still hot, and you can have a seat, and we will tell each other stories, and Bob will tell me when to stop, and everything will be just fine. Oh, by the way, uh, my name is Knax. What should I call you? And she's looking at David. You can call me Dave. Dave. Okay. Hannah and Dave. I'll try to remember this. And then she's off making some tea. I find a seat and sit down. I try and enjoy the warmth and the area. It feels much better in here than it did outside. I walk over to where David is and I, I sit I sit next to him and I, I sit really close for like half a second and then I'm kind of like I scoot over a bit and uh, shiver um, this is this is nice yes they are they are friends I think so Hannah yeah we we can we can feel safe here for a moment. Oh God, <laughs> this is all so surreal. I thought. Uh, I thought things, people, like they was not in this world. Well, I mean, I don't know what I thought, but obviously they're like us, right? And and you can feel it. Like, uh, uh, you know, I sort of look at her like I, I'm the. We're not how we were. We're different. I remember being who I was, and that is who I am. But I'm also who we were before. Both of them, I think. Oh, that's this is sounding ridiculous. Sorry. No, oh. not not ridiculous. True. I, I, I was always jealous of you. Both of you. But, but not now. Why were you jealous? The, the way father looked at you. He never looked at me that way. (laughs) Well, I suppose father was proud. You know, I had a good job. And I sort of find myself remembering, yes, I had a job. I, uh, I wrote. I was good at it, right? Yeah, very good. Very good at writing. Hmm. Ah. Uh, where, where is, where is the other? That I can't remember. I find myself trying, and I go, I don't know. Shouldn't he be with us? Or maybe he never came with us. I, I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't even remember how I came to there. I do try and think on that. What happens when I try and remember? What was the last thing? The last thing before the endless beautiful parties and the the darkness. This would be an intelligence plus resolve check. One success. There is a faint memory, but it might be hurting you to remember this. Will you try? Yes, I will. I'll try and fight through this discomfort. I need to remember at least something, if not everything. You remember being at your father's flat in the cellar, to be more precise. It is a big building with multiple parties living in there for rent. And 
every party does have a little cellar. Your father collected many, many things down there. And you remember you were on the trail of some secrets regarding your family. You made a discovery which was unsettling to say. I did. And I remember my wife. She knew and she was excited and it was something exciting. It was something interesting. But why was he hiding it? You had an argument down there in the cellar with your father. He did say something terrible and then you start getting the feeling that the place to which you want to return might not want to have you back. Please roll three dice. No successes. This is good for you. Otherwise your sense for what is real and what might not be your anchor to this reality might have been shaken. You risked clarity loss in this moment. <laughs> and I feel a strange unease. It's almost as if one of my hands where I'm sitting just briefly, insubstantially, is in the chair. And I kind of, as I realize that, pull back. And I feel the solidness of the chair. And yes, this memory, I... Uh, and I don't say anything, I just sort of frown and stare forwards. Bob made his way to uh, the food Hannah gathered, and he is happily munching on this, whilst Knucks became perfectly still as you two were talking. She might have been in statue as well, holding midair the teapot and a cup which she wanted to fill. As you fall silent, she turns only her head towards you, listening intently. You are siblings, aren't you? Yes, that's that's what brother means, right? And you have been three. And I look back at the Knacks and I, I nod. Did, did you get anything? She seems overly excited. I kind of frown and I reach into my pocket and pull out that ticket and I say, if you mean did we get anything, well, this led us here, these, these tickets. Yes, yes, it worked! You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the adventure Red Moon Above the Spreepark for Changeling the Lost 2nd Edition. Our Game Master was Tobias, who you can find as Tommer2 on Twitter. Players were Craig and Yanni Brienbari. Changeling the Lost 2nd Edition is published by Onyx Path Publishing. The music is made by the talented Simon Kölle, who you can find at simonkolle.com. Sound effects are from soundbible.com, and salamisound.de. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Heuschelbear, Nastasha Rollerson, and David for their generous support. And we would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. Thank you again for listening, and see you soon, again.